record. And then, um, you know, we'll say something witty. And then I'll something go witty. To, there we go. And then I'm going to go witty to again. Share a screen with sound. And we'll do Good. this. And I'll click share. And I'll hit our theme music. <laughs> Welcome to Everyone Racers, There's a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run. SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur and girls racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy, Chrissy, and Chrissy, and I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. Oh, uh, no El Jefe is off this week because <laughs> the boss deserves time off when the boss says he gets time off. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm mental. Uh... And we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to a Mercedes edition of our podcast. It's episode 291. And you say, oh, I've never heard of a 291E. That's an odd one, right? Now, no, <clears throat> this is the C291 Sports Racer. It was developed in 1991 as the FIA created a new three and a half liter formula class. And it was powered by the M291 three and a half liter flat 12, making 550 or 600 horsepower. That's pretty good. Uh, despite that, it was not competitive. And it was Mercedes' last effort in sports car racing. And they decided to go to Formula One starting in 93. So, Hey, if you're not competitive in your sports car racing either, then get your bingo card out. It's free. Yeah. 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 So uh, what y'all working on? Um, I, I know what Chrissy's working on. I know what I'm working on. So I'm going to go to mental and say, that mental, sounds, what are this you like a great idea. On? All right. Uh, well, the, this, the, this past weekend, I, I, uh, I didn't really do much of anything. Um, Vicky and I just spent some time together. The Thursday prior was our 21st anniversary right after. So the Thursday we recorded last week. So yeah. So we, uh, we went out to dinner and did our, our normal anniversary thing. Uh, then say yeah, Saturday and Sunday, we actually, I had to work Saturday, which was just weird. Really? That's stupid. a shame. Yeah. Something uh, special, just project that you're on. It was, it was at like a one-time other thing that they oh, needed some good. backup. So yeah, we, uh, by the time I got in there and did it, I made the joke that it, I spent more time taking the roof off my car than I did actually, you know, to drive to work than I did actually at work. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Monday was our monthly out here, in Las Vegas. We have the Red Rock Motor Club, AKA the friends of chef. And I went out there and hung out with that and posted a bunch of stuff on our Instagram. Sorry if you had an opportunity to see that. And then, uh, yesterday, I finally, after having it for the better part of three weeks, installed Apple CarPlay on the Miata. So now, oh, have, great. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Play. If you guys don't know, I've, I have an ND Miata and the early versions of that, in fact, most Mazdas prior to 2019 did not have Apple CarPlay. They have a plug in, you can use Bluetooth. But after that, Mazda upgraded it. You can buy the module, take your entire dash apart, put the new module in, and, uh, then you have Apple CarPlay, and I I, I feel pretty good because I, I took it's that the whole easy because I, I was going to do this easy. to my mom's car. She has a 2017 CX-5, and this would be mm -hmm. good for her to have. So I I didn't know like do you have to go to to the dealer to have this done like for a software nope. thing or okay. Nope, bought mine uh, as long as it's got the latest version of the software on there. I bought my module from Amazon for like a hundred and fifty something dollars and had it here the next day. Came with instructions. I watched a couple of YouTube videos, took my dash apart, ran the new system, uh, made it all work. And I only had to put my heating and air conditioning controls on like four times because I kept forgetting the stuff that goes behind it. Got it all back together. Only had three screws left over, but nothing's rattling. So I'm feeling pretty good about the entire <laughs> that, Yeah, we're going to call that success. <laughs> that sounds exactly. like success. <laughs> yeah. That, I great. saved the screws because I know invariably something's going to start rattling and I'll have to take it all apart and find out where that screw went, but that's okay. Yeah, not that rattle. That is the sound of success. <laughs> exactly. Totally going to do that. Good. Uh, 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 Chris, what, well, actually, Chrissy, what? Whatever. We were together since we had a show, basically. Uh, 
we i was off thursday or excuse me friday which was great so i um we took half a day we kind of traveled the world uh went to a scrapyard for a part for the mazda which i'm not really gonna say here and um and then we went to ikea and bought a whole bunch of stuff for my room that I've transformed. And now it's fantastic. So yeah, so we went there and then uh, Chris's mom came over for the weekend. Uh, we didn't, nobody died, which is great. Um, so she was here and uh, they went out Saturday. We did a lot of yard work and a lot of stuff around the house. Uh, a lot of, and then we did a lot of packing for the upcoming race. So that's about it. Some other th stuff thrown in there, but it sounds your weekend sounds blissful compared to what we did this weekend. So <laughs> I'm a little, little jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Since the last show, I did some more cart welding and it's, it's not quite done because some other things came up. Um, you know, like we said, oh, well, we need to go get the Mazda. Okay. So we, you know, did that I don't know, early afternoon on Saturday. We went to do that after two some other things around the house in the morning. Got the, you know, started the NSX up, pulled that right out. Got started the Mazda up, pulled that right out. No problems. Put everything back away. Got Scooty on the trailer. Chrissy gets in the Mazda to come home. I'm and all excited to drive it. We could have yeah. towed it, but I was like, no, let's drive it. You know, I got it, my jacket. It needs a and I'm like, I'm already. Totally. totally. And that's, that's why you put plates on your race car. Right. And insurance too. So I can drive it. Yep. So uh, as soon as she lets out the clutch, clang and forward momentum ceases. <laughs> Clutch and, pedal still there. Mm -hmm. Cannot so we move. Said, okay, okay. Yeah. well, we need to go home now and get the other trailer. So we go have to go home. The MG is in the other trailer, so we have to, you know, get the MG out, get our stuff out, get you make room in the garage for said MG. Go back, get the Mazda, and this is where the winch. Remember the listeners. Remember when I put that winch in the trailer back in the fall? Wow, yep. it was <laughs> it, went to good use. It is so much better than having to push your your janky broken cars into the trailer when you have a nice mounted wired winch. All I have to do, grab the little remote, push the button, mm. right, right up into the trailer. Wonderful. So we are come back. We're lamenting for a while, but I can't get it in the garage because my mom's car is blocking it. And I don't, didn't, we didn't have the keys Saturday. So, so I did other things like uh, some scooter maintenance. It needed new valve stems because the valve stems are on it. The rubber had degraded enough that you pushed on them. The air came out of the tires of Scooty. So had to do that. I also made a trailer hitch for Scooty for our um, fueling trailer. When I say made a trailer hitch, that means I drilled a hole in the license plate bracket where it stuck out under the license plate. And so we're going to try that because do it's you already have there. that picture though. Cause it did the whole thing with the trailer that looked on it looks pretty dope. Yeah, let's let's see. The, the license plate bracket is only attached to the bodywork, not to the frame of the scooter. There's not really a frame back there to speak of. So we're just going to try this and try to be good about not uh, not using too heavy a throttle or brake when we're doing it. But there's, uh, there you uh, go. there's a it's Yamaha scooty. C3 scooter pulling a custom-made fuel cart. And I did drive that up and down the street a bit, and it was fine. Front wheel. Shopping carts a little bit, but you know, what are you going to do? It's good enough. Oh, as long as better, someone dies. Okay, keep, keep going. Keep going. Wagon. I'm getting there. M Mazda. Uh, so then Mazda, we pull that in. Well, pull it out of the trailer. And I say, well, let me just try it again. Like, who knows? Like, sometimes self-healing. No, no, I let the clutch out. I hear clank, 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 clank. I say, oh, okay. That's bad. And then we drive oh, it we down. We have to push it. We have yeah. to push it. Up push out of the trailer to get it out and, and then down we rolled it forward down the hill and we still hear clank 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 so, oh this is no good get it in the garage start figuring out we're gonna we're thinking we have to pull the trans and by the way the night before i bought a tra a, a clutch on clutch. amazon that was going to be delivered the next day on easter sunday delivery preemptive of for 250 bucks i said fine i'll just buy that just in case hey now i have a spare clutch because it was an axle Right side outer CV joint. So I got under, un pieces. undid the, the panel or the, the under tray because we knew we were going to need to take that out. And I was looking and I was like, there's still a lot of oil from previous oil spills uh, from seeping from everywhere. And then I was like, this axle, there's definitely more grease there. Mm, that looks really bad, actually. Yes. Now we, then we, fi let me figure it out. That yeah. would be it. That was the uh, entire outer joint to come apart. I poked at the boot and some of the balls fell down onto the control arm <laughs> and then some other random pieces. So yeah, that outer CV joint fragged. So it came out, 
put it, put the, have, have the new one, put it back in an eight hour job turned in or 45 minute, eight hour job turned into a 45 minute job. So that's great. And my replacement axle is already on the way from rock auto. It'll be here Friday. But so let's hope that new axle doesn't break while we're at bit race. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope well, that so you <laughs> should order, you should order the replacement one and have it shipped to the Napa there near, uh, yeah, the track near the yeah, track, just in case. Don't pay for it, and if you need it, yeah, you know. <laughs> yep, one of those kind of things. We, we won't need it. Yeah, it'll be fine. No, it's brand new. It should be okay. So anyway, so all we are of now, that. All, yeah. Plus now we're we're packed. Truck is packed. Trailer's packed. Like it just needs coolers and clothes. That's it. Yeah. Even tomorrow. Let's go. All right. Okay. It's this. It is news and notes time. Last winter before his accident, actor Jeremy Renner, you know him as Hawkeye and the guy that diffused all the bombs in the Hurt Locker, had accumulated over 200 decommissioned buses and fire engines and kept them in storage outside of Reno, Nevada. Now, suddenly, my what? minor car collection doesn't what? seem so bad. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Now available okay. for viewing on Disney Plus is Renovations. The twice Oscar nominated star is building specialty vehicles for charity organizations around the world. Quote, he's tied in with a lot of charity, said Renner's friend and producer Rory Mill Milliken. Quote, he's got a great networks with charities around the world. He started putting out feelers of what he wanted to work with organizations and looked at which ones helped kids that are legitimate, meaning the charities, of course, that he wanted to use his platform to help spotlight. That's how it started. So far, they've built a mobile music studio for underprivileged kids in Chicago, a rec center for kids in Reno, a water treatment center for people in India, a dance studio for a children's charity in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And notably absent from this program is the personality drama and chair throwing that tends to go with so many of these build uh, episodes. And a link to the Auto Week article from Mark Vaughn, as well as the trailer in our show notes. And recently, I just found this out today, it was on uh, the, if you go to the Hooniverse podcast, Jeff Clucker got to interview Rory Milligan. So they're actually, he's out there doing some Fantastic. cool stuff. Wow. Yeah. I'm still hung up on the car and car hoarding and bus hoarding but yeah. okay See, uh, it's normal if hawkeye does it that's God. that's facts sure it's not normal if it, that anybody does that but anyway poor charles leclerc not only can he not get can he not get a break apparently he can't get a break according to track uh, article by chris perkins the f1 ferrari driver the ferrari f1 driver has asked his fans to stop coming to his house his address has been leaked and some of his fans keep showing up at his door I might do that. Um, <laughs> st his <laughs> Now he's been asking them, please stop, according to the New York Times. The 23-year-old Monaco native was quoted, for the past few months, my home address has been somehow become public, leading to people gathering beneath my apartment, ringing my bell, asking for pictures and autographs. While I'm always happy to be there for you and truly appreciate your support, please respect my privacy and refrain from coming to my house. Please, poor he has enough problems. Don't just show up at his door. Look at you, Tom. I would not. I wouldn't, yeah, I would not show up at his door, but, uh, I would be, I would think about oh, waiting it. outside, like in a car <laughs> would, for him to come out, you know, maybe, hey. maybe. Yeah. And then, hey, hey, yeah. I, sign my, I mean, moving on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back in my day, you stole a car with a screwdriver and you hot wired it. And I can tell you how to start a civic without any, with, the, with like two tools in about 10 seconds, if you don't have the key. Kids these days, they're doing it with the headlights. Chris T, get the truth about cars. Give us the latest thing to worry about. So by connecting the to a Toyota RAV4 computer via a harness behind the headlights, thieves can utilize a can injector to convince the vehicle the smart key is close enough to activate the vehicle. The reporter was able to buy one of the devices needed for the process, which arrived built inside a JBL Bluetooth speaker. But... The researchers outlining the process say they've contacted Toyota with suggestions. Haven't heard back. <laughs> Waterfall. N noted. Yeah. I'm like, what I, I don't even know how to steal a car. I wouldn't. Anyway. I only know the ones that I really know. Like I said. Yeah. Like, like yeah, you, it. Uh, your late eighties, early nineties Volkswagens. I'm in there, but yeah. Anything else? Yeah. No. Yeah, I just use much. a key. I don't steal cars. 
<laughs> Neither do I, but sometimes you need to start something. And sometimes you need keys. mental does not <laughs> know how to steal a snow flack. Yeah. No, no, no. no. The, the, <laughs> no. The, the, the process of stealing a car and taking your own car when you don't have a key looks remarkably similar. Sometimes. <laughs> it does, uh -huh. especially sure does. when it's sitting in somebody else's driveway and Running. they don't know. Running. Right. <laughs> they don't know who this guy is. Uh, yep. Hopefully listeners remember the story anyway. Oh, well. Oh, well. You know, so if you lost the keys to your car and you need a new one, you know, there's a great place to look for it. Racingjunk.com. There you just go. get a whole new car don't don't even yeah. screw around yeah so i decided that we're going to pit i want to look for the most interesting thing i could find in any category that was within 25 miles of wampum pa that's where the track is so i did and i found this a 2007 porsche 997.1 gt3 cup car and i assume mental is screen sharing yes there he it is. goes so the ad states, this is a T3 cup from 2007, uh, where in its first year, the chassis won the 24 hours of Zolder, whatever that is. Uh, car has never been wrecked. Sounds Currently cool. has a 3.6 3 in it with, with a sequential that has 60 hours on it. New Pirellis are mounted, comes with one set of original BBSs. And and I think this looks like a like turnkey, like reasonable price for what you're getting. I mean, the cage looks gorgeous. I mean, it was oh, a cup God. car. It's yeah, got 65 K for uh, any GT three. Yeah. Right. This is sequential gearbox, like insane. digital dash. You're stealing it. Proper, proper. Don't steal in. it. <laughs> right. The fuel cell in the front has, has a dry brake already on it. Like the workmanship looks lovely. It looks very clean. Like this seems like a great deal. If, if you have the means. Yeah, yeah, this is a this yeah. is a good looking car. You could you could grab this and go run like uh, one of the uh, depending on your perspective, lesser or greater uh, amateur hey, endurance racing series. Mental, can you click the next link and uh, share that one as well? Oh yes, I. Chrissy yeah. also found something. I did find something. Day. So I got my racing junk email today, which I always look forward to. And this is a CNC machine for uh, doing your engine uh, for engine. Uh, machining and I want it um, for a only the price of a small house you can have your own CNC machine that will make you and fix you a um, for, for a, tooling a complete, it's a complete engine block this isn't like a holy crap this isn't like a small one like you know for oh, like doing like a, head work or something yeah this is you could make your own rims this is a Haas 4 axis CNC the machine it, machine it's got for so engine blocks. money so many buttons uh it's in excellent condition it comes uh with all kinds of stuff it's a four axis i just want to watch it actually like i just want to give it a piece of metal and be like make me something because that's what we do with cnc machines uh, i have them at my work and they are not this cool so yeah so i found this in racing junk so at the very least subscribe to the email because it is a joy to get it's so amazing that they have so many different things that they pull together in racing junk email. There's just so many different things. You're just like, who there's a thing that people like with racing and, and they subscribe to this email. It's really cool. Like it just, just get the email. Even if you just yeah. scroll through it quick, sometimes our ads on there, which is kind of fun, but um, at the very least get the email. So I oh, found that in the email coming today. Up and stuff like that. Yeah. It's fantastic. I do. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I actually do go through and like, look at it every time. It yeah. Shows up. I mean, you don't have to read the articles, but then, you know, every once in a while, somebody, some, some famous race guy died and was, they have some random pinup things and I don't know, it's just a fun conglomeration of it's racing junk is literally what it is. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Let's move on. Upcoming oh, racers! Uh, I guess what race is coming up? Oh my gosh, it's pit race. There are 107 cars, 19 of them BMWs. That's amazing. I think it's a reasonable ratio. Totally that's, that's reasonable. Reasonable. reasonable ratio. Now the cars, the BMWs are still boring because they're BMWs, but it's a good ratio. Okay, totally. fine. Yes, we we can we can just we can disseminate it that way. Five Miatas, nine Hondas, three Porsches, and lots of other good stuff. A 94 Tempo, a 01 Eldorado. An 83 oldless cutlass, old cutlass. That's amazing. Two Omnis, five Saturns. What? A 2012 Ford Fiesta and the two car probe team, Daddy's Velvet Love Seat. 
That's terrifying. Uh, if they have shirts, would you please get me one that's a large? I <laughs> will. We will be friends with them. I yes. will give them like a, uh, a Chrissy's mom cookies, which are already in my possession, by the way. So come over and say hi because I might give you one. Even better that it's a that the cars that they're running are probes. Because what else would you have? <laughs> so you, bad. I can't wait to see it. You know, I, I hope they yeah, have a good yeah. theme. Oh, that's good. I, I feel like, yeah, just that, that name in and of itself, you know, you throw on some polyester disco shirts, bam, you're living large. All right. Now we're moving on to listener feedback and we're going to talk about oh, the we, uh, what we are, got oh. recent results. Oh, yes. We Chrissy, tell us about our recent results. Oh, there are no none because nobody was racing over Easter except to eat more ham. <laughs> if that's what you do yeah. on Easter, yeah. that's what we did. We had an amazing ham on Easter. Totally. So, and it was sad because there was plenty of time where I wish we were watching racing or caring about other people race because it was pretty, pretty slow yeah. weekend with all these things. And then we got a lot of feedback from mental. Where was all this feedback from? This initial was like, where oh, is all this from? Well, so, yes. To. So the, uh, the, the first chunk of stuff that I'm trying to color while we're reading. So, you know, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. This is, uh, I, uh, Last week, if you were listening, my 914 was delivered literally as we were recording. I ran outside, handed the money, came yes. back in, and he sat in my garage. Thank you, Mikey. Uh, then while I went back out and did the, the paperwork on this, and it, where it was delivered, I, I uh, drove it around the block and parked it, and it immediately marked its territory with a giant oil puddle, which I oh. then you know tried to craft an artsy photo of of. Cause it, you know, it's already staining my driveway. So, uh, but a lot of people did like looking at the nine fourteen. Oh, okay. So this is all in, in, in response. On the gram, Got yes. Got uh. it. So Fort Kickass said, I had one donated to cars for kids. Looking back, I should have kept a drive train and built a mega bug. That sounds amazing. Mechanical, mechanical, mechanical engineer, engineer nerd. Uh, yeah. I almost, I almost scrappy made a scrappy yard <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Well, at least it doesn't leak water. That's what he's yes. Yeah, if it starts leaking water, we have problems. Uh, Brian McTaggart on McTaggart official said, quote, could be worse. My charger left a trans fluid puddle that sure looks like hastily drawn male parts, which I would add, seems like something a charger would actually do while giggling. <laughs> I'm a charger. <laughs> Uh, Brad B said, "Hey, I know that car." <laughs> Tim B titled it hashtag #Reflections of my decision. <laughs> yes, uh, our buddy Leppermind pointed out, and Chris and Chrissy know this because they have an English car that if it's tripping oil, that means it's got oil. Steph it called had it stupid oil. harsh. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't really have it now. Uh, and the fascination was happy to see it back on the street. Now, before we move on to this next thing, um, as, as you know, Jeff, this is Jeff's busy season. So he apologizes for not being here. Uh, and I don't go and watch, uh, you know, TV shows with my, my young teen person. So I, I sat around here while the video was, you know, compiling and downloading. And uh, I made a video of a six second snippet that turned into a 10 minute snippet that turned into an hour long video uh, that I posted online. I didn't think anybody would see and I call it Chrissy doesn't like TIG welding. And is that me making fun of TIG welding? Yes. <laughs> okay. And there, <laughs> there is a video of that. For one hour, it goes one hour in like 47 seconds that oh, we put on, no. two, we put on our YouTube channel and it got almost as many views as last week's episode. Oh no, <laughs> I did not know this is a thing. <laughs> so Greg, okay. uh, Greg O said that the video made his night. <laughs> hey, Andrew S called her imitation frighteningly accurate. I mean, at least I hear it all day. So Tim V said the video is better than listening to most news stations. <laughs> oh, I did not know this existed. That's funny. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. And in other better news, when you see Craigers at CMP, make sure to give them a happy birthday because two days ago birthday. yesterday april 11th craigers turned 50 so 50 punches for him from everyone he sees that'll work well <laughs> so, hugs or something right, right. 50 yeah. hugs right. let's 50. go with the hugs 
Because yeah. if you try to that's, that's punch be, Craggers, a lot it's of hugs. <laughs> it, a lot of people don't it's know. A lot, Craggers, it's a lot of anything. <laughs> it is, yeah. but you're you're not going to connect to Craggers unless Craggers wants you to connect to Craggers. All right, fine, right. fine. Yep, yep. <laughs> So hey, happy birthday, Craiger. Say hi. Legitimately you happy pink. birthday, you young man. Welcome, welcome to middle aged. Yeah, and while you're at CMP, consider the potluck. Term you have there. to go to the right. potluck. Term oh Lincoln's my god! Just putting it out again. I mean, eat Kurt's butt. Everyone wants to eat Kurt's butt. There's everyone knows it. No one's ashamed of it. It's just going right in the mouth. But you need to make sure you bring something to the potlucks. So what Kurt has said is he wants to have a potato salad competition. So everyone bring potato salad and there's going to be taste <laughs> tests and prizes. <laughs> for the none of that, none of that store-bought crap. And, you know, right? we, we or lots of, of it and figure out which store is better. You could do that's that true. too. There's, there's categories. Yeah. That's oh. why. And, and he's going to be okay. the official taste right. tester. for no. all. No. I like right. it. So right. no. all the potato uh, salad that you don't bring to any other potluck for the rest of the year. Bring no. to CMP. <laughs> okay. Yes. yes. Also, don't do any of that. that don't is do joke. that. <laughs> do yeah. do He's kidding. Bring no. other things. Oh, I fell for that one. Good one. Oh, <laughs> no, I <laughs> just know. made that up. Kurt, Kurt just asked me to pimp the potluck. And so I just thought I'd come up with that one. Um, <laughs> do, no, we go do to a lot of that. potlucks. Thank you. We go to a lot of potlucks and it, it's really become just a, a darn fine lemons tradition i would argue that kurt and craigers hosting the cmp potluck may very well be the best one on the circuit and that's why it all started i think is because they showed look mm -hmm. how great this is look how yeah. wonderful this is as a community event and it's thanks to them that we all do it now so yeah they thanks, feed guys. the corn workers first they put a big bucket full of uh for for the lemons of love charity uh last year it was funny because everyone that showed up at the potluck went oh i don't have my wallet actually went back and got their wallet and came back and put cash in the uh, donation bin. <laughs> that was just really funny. And if, yeah, if you've never had Kurt's, but you are missing out. Yeah. Hey, now I think so, they have two so barcodes for lemons of love so that he can say, Oh, no excuse. You, no you excuse. probably have a phone. So <laughs> yeah. there's that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, continuing on the YouTube from our episode from last week, Michael K says, quote, as a team captain, it behooves you to have an extra pair of socks, gloves, and helmet anchors anchors in your gear bag. Helmet anchors are common one. Folks are you're walking around the paddock, and especially if they're in a ride and drive. I actually have one set of each Hans, Defender oh. and Z-Tech, but he just had to sell the Hans one at the last race to someone who didn't have the right That's anchors so on nice. there. Yeah, and uh, yeah. It, for as much static as we uh, give Mike uh, about that sort of thing, you know, while he's sitting there looking like a crazy person in a bathrobe with a cigar and a you know giant tall boy in his hand, his team is actually pretty organized, and so that's good, solid advice if you're going to be a team captain. Socks are yeah, cheap. You can you can look crazy and also be organized. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. have a thousand pairs of socks because. For a while, we have forgotten a pair of socks, and so we just keep yep. getting more. <laughs> and so and we if, have... if I've ever forgotten my socks, and I have to go buy, I buy two. So yeah, yeah, my gear bag has like nine pairs of socks. Kind of. Yeah. And yes. Recently, I just found my Barco ones with the FA8 with the tags on them to show their Nomex socks. So I those are in the toolbox now. So when oh. we go to Gear Tech, we're just going to grab those. That's out a great idea. Time. I mean, all of ours are legit. They just don't have they tags, are. and so they are. Yeah. But we'll keep the one with the tags for Gear Tech. Okay. And good. usually you can tell what they—they they look so different than normal socks. I feel they like do. most time that socks aren't a big deal. Anyway, Tyler Stank. I'm going to say his last name because it matters to this. Uh, something I he says something I do is keep all my gear in a dedicated plastic bin. With the, I, that's a very common. I think uh, I I inventory that usually before every race, but before every race. Uh, but before the race and every time the gear comes out for washing, if that is, bin is in the car, I know I have everything. Also, my my race gear is permanently stanky. <laughs> but in case that's uh, that's a, fe a feature, not a bug. I uh, got a had a text conversation with him this morning. He's still at advanced infantry training and was number two for soldier of the month uh, this month. He's doing wow. quite well down there. First loser. Oh, oh stings, man. Oh. It does. <laughs> it stinks. Uh, Greg O said, Hey, when I'm not wearing a cool shirt, I wear a non certified set of Oakley Nomex firefighting gear, shorts and t shirt, not long. Mm -hmm. I always use a multi layer suit. I don't need Nomex underwear, but at a spring and fall races, I'll wear them for extra protection in place of cotton undergarments. Being uncertified, they were a fraction of the price on closeout. Oh, Those are the ones have top, top big, top. sexy linked. We yeah, have the long ones, but they're yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, we do too, but they're long and yeah, heavy. The and so they're not like not exciting to wear. Uh, they're good for the winter time. They are they're wonderful fine, for the winter fine time. in the winter time. Yes, when it's 97 degrees outside, they're not ideal. No, because they're black. no, but short, but actual shirts and a t shirt, uh, shirt, shirt, shorts and a t shirt are kind of nice idea. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like wearing uh, extra undergarments in the wintertime to stay warm. <laughs> sure. That's <laughs> weird. <laughs> it doesn't like to be cold. It's it's true. True. <laughs> oh. oh. Yes. Hi, Mom. <laughs> All right. Look at that. We are through everything, and we have rolled up on the reason you've tuned into this. It is the patented powerful pre-pit, pre-race preview presentation powered by Pramontes. Except we're, gonna, we're not going to go get a sandwich with fries on it because that means going into the city. No, no, no. Yeah. There's one actually two exits up uh, in that okay. whole shopping center area up there. You can, you can pop in there. So if you're looking for, you know, to get a little Pittsburgh flavor and not go all the way into the city, you can uh, you can do that one right up yep. the road. Get yourself a Steel City Reserve and a Pramontes sandwich and you y yins can't get much more Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well all right let's talk about all the usual stuff that you need to know even if you've been to pit before you probably forgot if you've never been here there great here's what you need to know about the paddock when what do you when do you get there well first off the road that you're take, getting to take there once you get off the turnpike you're going along you pass some stuff pass the gas station and then it's going to come up quick on the left hand side is the little like back road that goes up to the track. And there's a fairly small sign on the right-hand side of the track that says, hey, pit race this it's way. It's not that small. It's but if you're doing it in the I dark, expected. it's white. Yeah. And so, but you have to look for it. Signs yeah. on the right, yes. Yep, sign on the right, road on the left. And you feel like, well, I'm just turning into a neighborhood. This is not a racetrack. No, that's that's the way to the racetrack. In between two and, houses. Yes, and what's very weird is the sign that says pit race is actually after the intersection, which is unlike every other place. So you have yeah. to, you know, it, and it's got an arrow and it's pointing. Yeah, so don't fall it's, for that. It's a little strange, but no, you know, you're in the right place, and eventually you'll be past houses and go up close to a windy road up a hill, and that means what you get there. So um, when you get there, follow the, you know, it's simple the way to get in. It's a long circuitous road, as it usually is in a racetrack, and you're going to come to a shed. There you will find some nice people who need you to sign waivers. So that's always nice. Uh, when you get there, though, too, you'll get through the you sign your waivers, get through, go find a paddock spot. Chrissy, yes. Uh, can we talk about the pre um, that's waiver in the next section? Sorry. Thanks. So uh, you need to figure I out where read. you're going to park. Thanks. You can't park in the Black Lake. That is immediately to your right once you're by the, the shed. That is getting used for autocross and other stuff during the weekend. We are not allowed there. Do not park there. Okay. Other places to not park is if you see any uh, red outlined areas, they're usually around the, the garage right in the middle of everything. Those are the power spots that people have paid dearly for. Ask me how I know. So don't park in those spots. They have a cone with someone's name on them. Someone paid a lot of money for that spot. That's it. Um, also over by the carting center, which is to the right as you're coming into on the other side of the Black Lake, there are actual people who are going to be there for carting all weekend. Please don't take their spots because they this is their, their hobby and they need a spot to park for their carting. So where you can park, though, is they go all the way kind of to the end. There's a T. You can go to the left. It goes all the way down along the pits. There's a, a fair amount of room down there. So that is a place you can go. But I will warn you, if you get there any time after Thursday night, there probably won't be any space down there. And there's no room to turn around. So you end up seeing people backing their tow vehicles and trailers out quite a ways down this road. Um, but anything to the that's near the... North garages is just kind of, that's not the carting center, not the Black Lake is all free for all. Um, there's not a huge amount of room at Pitt. So, you know, you can't spread out like you can at NJMP where there's all the room in the world. But um, there is there is plenty of room for everyone as long as people don't man spread all over the place. Uh, also, right around the garages, the, the, there's the, the central north, they call them the north garage, right in the middle of everything. Anything on either side of the garage doors is for the people who bought the garages, which are expensive. And anything up on the upper event garages around those also for the people that have the garages, please uh, be respectful of that. 
Cool. If you do find an open space, take what you need, but don't take it all just because. All right. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things that pit race started doing a number of years, I say they started doing it during uh, Corona and they stuck with it is they have an electronic track waiver and that's available. Uh, the link to that is on the forums. We'll have a link to that in our show notes. Do this before you get there. It makes your life immensely simpler because otherwise you're going to have to bring it up in your phone. Chris. The best way to find it is in the track info, the, or the race info page for this race um on lemons not not on the forum but just you go to like schedule pit race race info on there is a link to the track waiver and this is this is pit race track waiver i just want to make sure that we're clear on that correct you're still gonna have to sign the lemons correct yeah this is not just you know the poor folks yeah the poor folks working at the gate will have to explain to you well there's the lemons waiver and there's a if, if you've ever raced before you sign like six waivers just suck it up all right that's just how it works all right um legal I do like Pitt doing it online ahead of time. I think it makes it faster. You get there, they check your name off the list, take a picture of you with the iPad and you're through easy. It is. It really is good. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit and talk about the entrance. As we just mentioned uh, a few seconds ago, I, uh, I brought this up on the Google maps because I have bit off on this so many friggin' times. But if you look at the street view, that is the sign and it is directly oh, across wow. the, the, the road, this little tiny two lane road from the one that you take, that's the road onto the track right there. And wow. Like, and <laughs> this is Hindale. But the sign is like a four by eight sheet of plywood size. Like, oh I yeah. Guess it I is. Expecting it's not bigger. Big. No, it is. But yeah. And you're thinking, oh, well, you know, it's like every other racetrack. Here's a sign. It'll be like the next entrance. No, that's it right there. All right. Um, yeah. This race is real. The, the track there, there, there are a few tracks that have really just bonded with the lemons community and pit race is one of those tracks. The staff likes us, the, where everyone there likes the staff. So just don't, don't go there and start being a tool. Uh, as Chris mentioned, there are several other communities that'll be functioning there. The drifters uh, will be out there or they'll be running autocrosses, that kind of stuff. And you know, they're, they're doing their passion. You're doing your passion. Respect that one. Typically they do have a test day on Friday and they do it kind of, you know, um, with some classic cars and some very expensive stuff will show up. There was that C3 Corvette, uh, from a few years ago that was probably worth more than half the field all put together. And everyone's looking at them like you are brave. There'll, there'll be some hardcore Porsche GT threes out there, that sort of thing. They'll run those groups. And then, uh, you know, the, the lemon screw will be out there in their run groups or in the past, they've also just done it where give me your money, go drive. Don't, don't yeah. wreck into Most anything. Most of the time they're breaking it. They're breaking it into lemons groups and normies. And yeah, I think it, it's what I recall. It's five sessions that you get. If you sign up at dedicated specific times, 20 so minutes. Yeah. And, it's unfortunate. And they'll, They'll have you lined up beforehand. Uh, pay attention because the track entrance on the testing day is going to be a little different than the track entrance on a lemons day. Um, Eric and Steve are judging. I don't know who the third judge is. Uh, you know, um, Eric is a, uh, he's a, he, he respects the uh, whole Pittsburgh area, but he's got to travel back to Chicago. So nothing absurd. Steve doesn't drink and he eats healthy. So, uh, you know, um, if actually, if you want to get on Steve's good side, uh, he will be, uh, having a, uh, a solicitation during the driver's meeting for lemons of love in memory of our dear teammate, Aaron, that'll be a great way to get on his good side on that one. And the final thing is we mentioned that that road that goes through the neighborhood. If you've never been, you'd be like, did I take the right turn? You'll be running in and out. There's a gas station down at the bottom of the hill that sells 93 octane. It's easy to get to. Uh, they also sell ice. They have a, a actually a pretty decent um, little cafe inside there. That's that's mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and the reason I say that is you'll be <laughs> running in and you'll be running in and out of the track a lot. The road to the track goes through someone's neighborhood. It's obvious when it's lemons. Don't go plowing your toe pig down through there at 70 miles an hour. Dial it down. There's literally like little kids with tricycles and bicycles and that sort of stuff there. And we just don't want to be those people. We'll leave that to the BMW CCA, let them go all drive like complete tool bags. Okay. Talk, let's talk facilities. Now that you're in the track. Um, 
I don't believe we mentioned the two sets of garages. Did we did we just we did. differentiate? We there's, there's the north garages, which are basically right in the middle of everything. That is where HQ is. That is where the potluck is. That is where we will be. Aren't they the is. central garages? No, they call them North. I just, okay. believe me, I've talked to Pitt a lot this week. That's fine. And North garages. That's North. Great. The other ones up on the hill are the event center garages. Yes, that's true. Because they have an event center above them. I will remember that. Good. So uh, now that you know that both sets of garages, they already have garage spaces at attached. People already have those. Um, but now that we're thinking about bathrooms and showers, let's talk about that. So the facilities here are great. Lots of different buildings, lots of bathrooms and lots of showers to go in. So the North garages have at least the women's have two showers, multiple stalls. Uh, it's probably the same for the men. So yep, it is. They, they have uh, showers and restrooms. The event garages have showers and restrooms. The um, If you go over to carding, so at night, Typically, there aren't usually too many people around the karting center. They don't seem to stay overnight. Um, you could go karting also. There's That's a thing. Um, but We've done right, that. totally. Great karting so track, it really is. In yeah. the karting, it's a little bit smaller, but there's a lot. There's uh, there's still a good couple stalls. They also have showers there too. So if you are go, if you go walk in one and it's a popular time, um, this is an easy place for you to go to. So it's going to be uh, kind of like on your road out. Um, and we are showing a map here, but... Um, there it's kind of it's in a row of all of there's little cart garages and then at the end of that row there is a, a small building and that has restrooms and showers in it as well um there are also restrooms in the what do we what is the, what is that called the main center the the, oh, the classroom new building oh the i didn't even go there hold on i'm i'm in the classroom so yeah. the classroom is where some of some of judges will be sitting it's not judging so it's you know hq there's going to be people over there uh it's a nice place there's it's a huge vaulted ceiling classroom there are restrooms over there uh it's also well, a nice yeah that's what i was actually literally going to say it's a nice place to duck in uh if you just want to get out of the sun because it's going to be pretty warm this weekend uh that's very well air conditioned okay there's also a new building which we've never uh i was in I was in because that's where the corner worker meeting was, uh, but I didn't that's look around. The, the store is now too. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, that is literally on your way in the door or in or out, whichever way you're going. Um, and that is a brand new building. So check it out. Uh, only go in places that you're allowed, but I think there might be a restaurant in there too, because it kind of seems like the upper floors has something. So either a classroom yeah. session or, or there might be a restaurant in there. So uh, we'll all investigate that because I'm not really sure what's there. But anyway, facility Facilities are awesome at this place, especially to some places that we've been. So lots of restrooms, lots of showers. Awesome. Track the food. Was pretty well equipped when I was in there too. It was better than expected. Yeah. Um, yeah and it used to be in a little trailer on the far side. Yeah. So it's, I'm sure it's much better than what it used to be. Track food. So there is, uh, there may be a food truck. There used to be one that kind of lived there-ish. Uh, make no guarantees. Also, there might be this new restaurant. So, uh, but don't, rely on track food i don't think um it's you, you never know if the um, trailer's still there the nachos uh will will recommend the nachos from the and trailer. loaded fries i think were also a yep. similar item over there yeah uh it was, i think it's a barbecue place and it was very very good so if it's still there definitely go there and get it but uh i i know i don't know that it's open every weekend i would imagine if they know that people will buy stuff it'll be there so um unknown but uh and uh so there's also a potluck so i know we'll talk about it later but there's a potluck on saturday night right after racing um it's going to be in the north garages we will set up tables bring your stuff i'll tell you where make sure it's hot make sure you bring a spoon uh, and if you need help with anything, let me know if you need a place to cook things, if you need, uh, if you need spoons, if you need something, I will be happy to try to help you with that. So, uh, I don't want that to deter you from bringing something. Also no half eaten pizzas, no ha open cheese doodles and, um, and no, uh, uh, potato salad, please save the potato salad for CMP, please. Okay. So, uh, what are we looking at here? This is a Google map or uh, satellite view of the Pitts Race Complex. So oh. here we see the the main building, which I believe that is the That's the North always... Garages you're pointing at right now, Mental. Yes. The That's usually where we do the... judging and everything. Correct. The, the one with the, the little red spot on it, that is the timing and scoring building, which has the classroom and whatnot in it that Chrissy was just talking about. 
on the far right is the event center garages and event center and bathrooms that are in there. That's and there's quite a hill to get up and down there. Yeah. So there's it, that's yep. a little bit more challenging than just a straight walk. And there's no parking. So go up there and watch the race because it's a great viewpoint to watch the race, but walk. Yeah, the parking is all taken by people who are in those garages basically. Yeah. And even then we're double parked. And so you can also see where the, uh, where that wording is down. If you go a little South of that, the uh, event, the carting, um, restrooms and shower location is down the green, the green roof, the, the green roof, the right? Is the green is the, is the bathrooms. The other ones are carting garages for people that leave their carts at the track all the time. And then the South side of this, uh, is the new building where the store is and whatnot okay so stuff around the track so there is not much around the track uh if, if you need to go out so this is kind of what mental was getting at if there if you want to get gas if you want to get anything really uh you're gonna have to go out the whole complex along the, down the winding road turn right and then you're gonna go back like you're going back towards the highway if the chances are that's what you came in on uh and it's going to be from there on your left and um, it is a little gas station. So if you bring your trailer in there, it's going to be a little tight. You probably could get there, but I would I would not recommend bringing a trailer in there. Um, it's kind of like a, you know, side of the road gas station. It's got, you know, eight pumps, 10 pumps kind of thing. So, um, so but they do have ice. I believe they also have Kino. Just kidding. Um, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Actually, thanks, I, thanks. I don't thanks. Think you're, over here don't all think you're wrong. I know I'm yeah. right. They have Kino. Um, so they have uh, ice, but I believe they do not, unless something would have changed, they don't have alcohol. They shouldn't because I'm pretty sure it's a state law. Uh, so they that's, might have beer now. They might, they but I'm not, I'm not sure that they do. So do not assume that they have beer. Um, also don't assume that you can get beer anywhere close to there because I really don't think you can. Uh, so I, and I don't, if I don't know where the store is, we always bring our own. So um, there's not much else around there. There might be one restaurant that might be open down that street, but I'm not sure that it is, so, especially past COVID. So otherwise you really, have to go much further south on the other side of the turnpike. To right, get right, to right. A, a town which is a decent beaver falls it's there it's oh yeah 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 town. plenty yep. there's plenty of stuff there including the world famous orum's donut shop so mm. you, if you're if you're you're uh trying to make make happy to your teammates or maybe bribe the judges get them some orum's donuts those are great that's you yep. you surprised people with that last year or the year I, before or two years ago yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. totally um, okay, so there's not much, much around. So let's talk fueling. Uh, fueling is in the hot pits. It is far away from most people. Um, if you don't already have a cart, go find one because it's far. Um, don't steal ours. We just made it. Do not steal ours. But it is uh, about half, I'm going to say halfway, maybe not quite halfway, uh, down the road to, to the end of where the, the pits are. So um I'm sorry, I'm not explaining there's, it well. There's only but... one ramp to go down to the right toward the pits from the paddock. There's uh -huh. only one, and that's yeah. where you go. And you obviously have to be suited before you go through those gates, but that's where you are. That's where fuel. That's where you can fuel. And uh, they have track pumps. Yes, right over by carting. So I think you should be able to, unless something has changed. Um, there is a significant hill. Good notes here. Um, yes, you're gonna have to go up and down the hill. Uh, and like I said, it's far, especially if you're coming from, you're coming from the event garages and need to go to fuel. Uh, you should probably have an elect electric bike and or some kind of pit pit ride plus your cart because it's going to be far for you to drag it. Um, so yeah, so that's fuel. Uh, let's talk weather. So if you were there last year, it was pretty miserable. This year is kind of amazing. So Thursday night, when most people are going to be getting there and unloading, it's going to be clear and in the high fifties, high fifties, ah. uh, Friday, sunny and 82 Saturday, partly sunny, 77, 40% chance of rain after two. So we have to talk about rain at this track where the track is located. It's in, it's up on a top of a hill. It gets pretty windy because the wind kind of picks up over the, the other tracks and where they have um, auto crossing. So it gets windy, but there are so many times where we've been standing on the track and if there's no sun, it is fine weather and you can see off into the distance that it's pitch black that is absolutely raining over there. So uh, if even if it says it's going to be raining 
and it might rain. It's going to say like 100% rain. It might be just, it might not be on the track or it might be a short time on the track. So don't assume that the rain is always going to rain at our at the track. On Sunday, cloudy, increasing chance of shower as the day goes on, especially after two, high of 76 and cooling as the storms come through. So um, make sure that you bring some rain tires because you never know. And like I said, pl uh, potluck on Saturday night, Black, Fra Black Flag Station. We're going to tear that all up and put some um, tables down. We are bringing, you bring the food and uh, Brian, the chef, will be bringing uh, the, a, a pig. So we have plenty, plenty of pulled pork and uh, and they're looking for a bartender. So if you are a bartender, we might have a job for you. I'm not really sure about that part, um, but that might have been a thing. So um, please bring food, not a half eaten pizza. And from our yeah. theme from last fall, we have some slow gin and blueberry schnapps and Midori. So whoever's bartending, we've got some. And we have, and we have, we're bringing the bar too, because I insisted. So yep. yeah. Can't go wrong with the awesome gin. light up bar. That's fantastic. Yep. yep. Okay. okay. Let's talk track. Track walk. Let's do this. I will share my screen. Oh, okay. You've already got it. Yes. Never mind. Cause mental let me do hopefully share my screen and let's talk through this. Let's go through it all together and say what we recall, what we want to you know, talk about. So really if all of us talk about it together is going to be the best. So let's do this. First, how do you get on and off track? That's important. You might check what you're sharing. Yeah, you're now not we're looking sharing the, the right screen. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, turn my turn. Let's go to the, let's try this again. I had this nice window all up. Well, anyway. I feel like we owe Jeff like a really big apology when he gets back. <laughs> well, when the director takes off, then, you know, you can only do what you we have, do. We so. have no directions. No, we can start here. This is a map, track map. I don't have like the, the numbered turns. I don't know if. When the, I can't screen share while you are. So. Oh, well then I can't. <laughs> Thanks. Is this how I, you do a podcast? Wow. I don't know. You're doing a great job. The, my screen sharing is paused. Why is it? Resume. Come on. Do it. I'm pushing the resume button. It's telling it. me you've started screen sharing. I, well, now I just stopped again because it said I was already doing it. Great. This is how the sausage is made. It worked. <laughs> Right? Didn't you share, oh. uh, share a picture or something? Yeah. Okay. There yeah. we go. We Great. see it. All right. It only took you a little while. I'm sorry. All right. It's so okay. you get onto the track typically by going to the event center garage side of the timing tower. There's a there's an obvious grid and there's an obvious upper grid. Usually you go through the grids and that is how you get onto the track. It's pretty obvious, really. Like you can't miss it. Get any off track though, you have to come all the way through the pits and way down by turn one, you can turn up and then go drive through the entire paddock basically along the paddock, along the pit straight. All right. So should we start at the uh, coming down the straight ready for turn one, everybody? Does that seem like a good spot? Down the yeah. mountain. Are you going to talk about comes. pit in? Absolutely. Uh, we'll talk about pit in as we come around that turn 18 where it is. I meant pit out. It's getting on track. Oh, with a sure. well, okay. blend line before we get to turn one yes the 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 blend line goes well you, you don't even get onto track until you're through turn one and then the blend line stays all the way on the driver's left all the way through turn two this is as it's going over a crest of a blind hill so mind the blend line stay to your left and stay to your left until you're well down the straight after two because it's a very long straight. You got lots of time to get it together before three. Do that. If you're coming through on the racing surface, don't cross the blend line. A lot of people like to do it. You totally don't need to. It's not really any faster at all. Set yourself up properly. You don't need to cross the blend line. It might be someone right there. You could ruin someone's day. And hey, usually they start black flagging people for that. So mind the line. All right. So you're coming down the straight before turn one. This is a downhill straight. You've got some good speed down this, good sight lines. And then you come into the braking zone and it's downhill. And then it bottoms out and goes uphill and then crests right about the end of the braking zone as it then crests the hill to go down into turn one. 
I find that most of the time breaking around the three board is adequate so that you can be off of your brakes just as you're turning into one. Um, but because of the, the undulations of the hills, you have to watch your brake pressure because you're going to be able to put more brake pressure on the uphill part. And as soon as you crest that right at the one board ish, you're going to lose braking as you go over the hill, but that's okay. Cause right in that time is when you should be turning in and throttling in anyway, mental. And check your mirrors as you do that. Cause you will see people with heavier or high powered cars dive to your inside or dive to your outside press that hill under maximum braking, then lock them right up and sail off the track. And you can say to yourselves why you didn't listen to the everyone racers podcast. Now I've passed you. It's true. Yep. Also to note here, this is a deceptive corner. You can carry way more speed through this corner than you think you can because it, there's no good sight line through it, but there's a lot of runoff from on the outside of one, especially because it, you know, toward the end of the track out is where the north track cuts over to the other side. So there's there's extra room there. So um, challenge yourself to see how you can how you can carry good speed through one. And as you come through one, then you're going to come. You can once you're tracked out there, you can just easily carry your speed through two as you crest the hill. Because it's all still to the to the left. Watch though as you're cresting the hill, because that's around the time a lot of cars need to shift. And if you're not straight as you crest that hill, it is a notable crest, and you're only with notable speed. So the car can get a little squirrely depending on your setup as you crest that hill and are shifting. So be careful. You got a long straight before three, like it's the second longest straight <laughs> on the track by only a couple feet. So, and it's all downhill. Uh, so in great get your passing done get all that done out of the way check your gauges because then you're coming into the three four complex which is going to require some significant hard braking because this is some of the tighter stuff on the track and um, again i usually found the three board is a great place to start braking so that you're off of the brakes as you're turning into three now three is a left hand corner four is a right hand corner chrissy so that's straight. Uh, you can fit and people will go three wide, I'd say. Mm -hmm, um, totally. Probably not much more than that, but this is definitely a passing zone. So watch who's oh, yeah. coming up for you from you. And there's possible if there's people that are, uh, you know, that are faster that we're coming down the first straight, you better be making sure that they're, you know, that they're going to come by. So you're not only dealing with the slower cars that are just getting on track for the first time, maybe for the first time ever, uh, getting onto track. And then you have the very fast cars and then it might be you. So there's a lot of speed differ differential that can happen in this section. Yep. Totally. And then you've got to sort yourself out before three and four, because going two and three wide between around through three and four is not going to work out well. You really just get everyone sorted out before that, because three is a left, four is a right. This is all downhill, especially four, and four is off camber. So you, you're you going to give up three to do four correctly. Mental. And if you've got to jump on the binders a little hard or maybe give up a position that you were fighting for or give up some momentum, don't worry about that. Get sorted going into three because you'll have a chance to make that up with what Chris is going to tell you right now. Thank you. So you're going to give up three completely. You are not going to track out at all on three. You're going to cut it in tight and stay left and then prepare for a good run through four. Um, the curbing on the inside of four is friendly. You can get two wheels on it, no problem. Uh, remember, this is off camber downhill. You have less traction than you think. And on the track out here, there's always, uh, there's plenty of dirt on the outside of the curb. I'll put it that way. Cause people who have turned in too early. So <laughs> they didn't give up three correct all the way to take four correctly. So, because if you do that, you've now got a 600 and something foot straight ish down the hill where you can get a, a serious amount of speed and you can pass people who did not do three and four correctly here if you do it right. Um, but you do then need to gather yourself up for five. Five is the very bottom of the hill all the way down. And it's it's the lowest point on the track. And at the bottom of five, the, it's, a, it's a little bowl, basically. And you can have a tremendous amount of traction down there because the, you're pressing on the wheels of the car as the car bottoms out there. So what I like to do is after four, come out to about halfway on the track. And as you're looking toward five, 
line yourself up with a little tiny straight stretch before the turn into five, get your braking done in that area, and then be, you know, you, you can carry a little bit of brakes into there if you need to, um, but then start, turn your head and look up the hill. And as you look up the hill, roll back into the gas, carry it through um, six. You can apex fine. You don't always have to. The car doesn't always work as well if you do, but on the off side of six, as you're starting to come up the hill, you lose a lot of camber. So watch out. You will lose traction there and you will easily float off toward the curbing there really quite easily. So be careful on that six. And after six, you're running up a very steep hill. That is, you know, you'll crest the hill and then go back down the other side. But the hill, the first half of the straight between six and seven is really steep. You can't see anything over the other side. So you need to be watching the flag station that is at the crest of the hill straight. Because there could be a pile up in their side. You have no idea. Um, great place for passing. And also, if your car is slow, just hang in there and stay, stay where you are and let the other cars get around you. Mental. And Chrissy alluded to... Um... We'll talk about the rain, but this is a a spot where a lot of cars will lose traction if if it's a, if it's a reduced grip scenario. So do just watch that flag station because they they're very good about it, and they will be aggressively waving that flag, not looking at you, looking at what they see that they're trying to warn you about. Yeah, and another thing about the rain at the bottom of the hill at five, uh, there is a river when it rains a lot because it's a low <laughs> point. So. Be careful of that, the bottom of the hill. All right, so you've, you've crested the hill between six and seven. You're going down the other side. You've got a great view into the S's that are coming up. Get yourself settled. That's great. And then you've you know, the S's, you've got a, a right, left, right, left, right as you go through seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And this is where Chrissy came up with her patented uh, well, copyrighted it's pat song. <laughs> it's not either of those, but I challenge you to sing it yourself. What is that song it's the called? Perfect, it's the perfect rhythm. Modulating the gas, modulating the gas, modulating the gas, modulating yep. the gas. And it works that, great yeah. through this whole section. That means because... you don't, chances are your car doesn't, you don't have to break. You can just modulate the gas. Doesn't work and for every just... car based car, but. Keep the car on the edge, go from one of the other, one side to the other, make it smooth, carve your turns basically, and stay off. Really, you don't need the brakes for the most part. Just modulate the gas. So turn seven, it's the first right-hander. You can go and brake way later on this than you think, like way later. Uh, also, because you are not tracking out on seven, you are just braking and turning in and hugging the right-hand side for eight. And eight, you'll turned you know it's a normal 90 degree corner treat it like a normal 90 degree corner no problem um, but then as you come out of eight and you track out you've got to immediately get back to the left so like you're going to continue back to the left after you tracked out to set yourself up for nine nine is a little different nine is a more like a 45 degree corner it is off camber and you are not going to track out at all because you need yourself yourself up for the 10 11 complex so after the, again, after the standard 90 degree left at eight, get yourself prepped for nine to turn right with your apex is your track out. There is no track out there. And as you're coming to 10, you're going to crest a hill just as the start of 10 and look over the hill, top of the hill, watch for the very end of the candies curbing on the left-hand side, that is your, your place you're targeting on the inside of 10. And you should be rolling into the gas here. A lot of people, as they crest this hill, float wide and then freak out and then lift. And then the front end catches and they spin and hit the wall on the inside to the left. Like it happened, it will happen this time. Mental. Also, as you're exiting 10, that is another low point on the track. So in the rain, there will be a river there. And I, all right, so now that we talked about the the you know seven, eight, nine, ten, before we get on to the trick of getting through eleven, uh, this is a place that that you will need to test traction in the rain. There are a lot of patches in this area, and from what I recall, the patches are actually are they more or less grippy? I don't remember. It's a couple of years since I've been in the rain here, but anyway, test out the patches because there's a notable difference. I think the patches are grippier, and you just stay on the patches. But I could be entirely wrong. 
Um, one guess. thing that I want to say out loud, because it's really just a message for myself, uh, is to continue to look up. So I have a, I have a difficult time looking up, but through this complex, while you're modulating the gas, it is tempting, at least for me, to be looking at the apexes because truthfully what I do is I check, I'm check them off. I'm like, yeah, I got this apex. I got this apex. I got this apex, but, uh, really it behooves you to look up and be looking at the next, you should be looking at the next corner and some of them you can, some of you, you can't, but the further you look ahead, the better you can navigate through these turns, but also with the other cars that are, that you're battling and that are around you fast or slower or whatever. So I challenge you to, uh, modulate the gas, but also with your eyes up. Mm -hmm. and kind of save if you're aggressive passing maneuvers till later this is not the best time to do it people are having enough trouble getting through this so just be mindful of when the right time to pass is through all this especially if it's wet and gosh i wish i could remember which ones which ones which you will stay on or off the patches but anyway you'll figure it out real fast when it's raining how about that so you end up having to drive around them okay back to 10 11 so you've come through nine you did not track out you stayed on the right You've come through 10. You've crested the hill with a late apex just over the crest of the hill. Now you're looking down the hill toward 11 and then 12. The, the key to hitting 11 correctly is there is a triangle-shaped red and white striped curb between the track you're on and the cutover for north track. Aim to put your two right side tires on that triangle. Like Think of it like a pointer cone. Put your tires on that triangle and you're pointing in the right direction for the straight from 11 to 12. You're going to carry a lot of speed that way too because your late apex through 10, hitting the triangle at 11 just flows really nicely into that little straight before 12. And this is a nice place to get like one pass done uh, for people that did 10, 11 poorly. Let me, uh, I'm going to just be rude and yank the screen out from underneath you real quick because this is highly valuable. You might not ever get it back. You might, you might not. And I, I apologize for that in advance because that's just how it goes. It's okay. Uh, but this is exactly what Chris is talking about. This is a, a Google view and you can see exactly that triangle that he's talking about. And it's legit because that is like the best. That is yeah. Right side tires on that. And it just, it all flows. It all works. What yeah. is the, I don't want to keep mixing up the rain, but some of the curbs here, and I'm sorry to cut you off. Some of the curbs here are safe. Most of them are, uh, but in the rain, in some the rain, of, they all get slippery. They yeah. All get slippery. Okay. They so all as we're talking about the that, actually, yes. I, I think the, cause uh, of where this track is, I think the actual uh, uh, scientific turn is slippy. You're not wrong. I, yes. I actually think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. Good. So now I'm trying to share again. Let's see what happens. Sorry. Now it gives I, me this. Your sharing is paused. I don't know how I did that. Maybe uh, it's because you, you stole it. It yeah. did. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, no. Right. It's all right. Sorry. We can fix this. We can fix All right. You're going to try it one more time or am I going? I, I'm working on it. I'm working on it because I am having apparently a couple of these windows open. So I'm trying to. All right. Because I have your map up if Undo you need me that. to do it. Okay, I'll try one more time to pull it back up and a new version and try to share this and let's see what happens. Yay! Yes, Yay! Cool. We got okay. it! Good. The link okay. to this track map will be in our show notes. And this is an excellent track map because it has actual feet measurements as well as altitudes. And radiuses of corners. Too. Mm. Yeah. All right. Is that what uh, that number is? Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. I learned something. Yeah. R135. Um, all right. So the now we're going to talk about the 12, 13, 14 complex because these all have to get taken together. Of note, there is these are some very important flag stations in this area. You have to watch. There is a flag station out to your left as you're um, coming up to 12. That is very visible on the straight between 11 and 12. You can't miss it. There is a little flag station on the left of 13. And most importantly, there is a flag station on your right and the inside of 14. That one you have to look at. Absolutely have to look at because you are cresting a blind hill corner at full throttle. So you must look at that flag station. No questions asked. 
Okay. So how do you do this set of corners? Well, this is another one of those. You give up some so that you can get the most later. What matters is your run out of 14 because that is leading you down what is essentially almost 2,000 feet of straightaway for a lot of cars. That's huge. And how much speed you carry through 14. So 13 is a completely give up corner and pretty much so is 12. 12 is the first right, the 90 degree right, except you're not going to track all the way out at 12. You're going to track at best halfway out because 13, your apex is your track out. 13 is only a vehicle to you to get between 12 and 14. It doesn't matter how you get through 13 as long as you're getting into 14 correctly, which means you're going to be all the way on your left as you're prepping to hit the high point of the hill, which is on the straight between 13 and 14, which is pretty short. As you're crest getting to that high point of the hill, you are rolling onto the gas, gradually rolling on, and as then you're going around the right-hand corner of 14 over the blind hill that you can't see. Also, it's an off-camber corner. So careful. You're going to lose a lot of traction as you come over over the crest and down that hill. Uh, the, if it's dry, the curbing on the inside of 14 is very wide and very friendly. You can stick most of the car on the curbing on the inside of 14. I suggest you do. And then as you're doing it, it's going to be very tempting for your eyes to just look at the grass off down off the next straight on the left it's just straight ahead of you don't do that you're gonna it's fight pretty, you're gonna yourself doing it right it's pretty because they do, they do an excellent job of landscaping there yes yeah they do you're gonna catch yourself doing it and then say no 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 don't do that look back to your right yeah. look toward where you're going which is the straight which is basically 15 is a kink in the straight so if you've done 14 correctly you know, you've set yourself up by giving up 13. You've rolled into the gas as you're cresting the hill. You've stayed all the way to the right, went over that curb. You're watching to make sure you're you're not staring at the grass. Fantastic. You're on this little straight between 14 and 15. You're going to track out after 14, but you need to get back to your right for the left-hand kink of 15. This is also a spot where you're going to have to deal with traffic management and too many people and people not knowing how to get through this kink properly. So look ahead enough to figure out how are you going to fit in with that traffic through this kink mental. Because as Chris said, they'll be breaking too much. So take your eyes off the grass and put it onto the traffic because that's going to allow you to start figuring out who you're going to be able to get past or who might be coming up on you as you do that. So this is a really good spot to start laying out. And as he'll go into the next straightaway, it's a great line of sight coming out of 14 because you're cresting that hill. You can see all the way down the straight and you can actually start seeing trouble in as far away as turn 16 if you have that totally. level of situational awareness. Totally, yep. And I would also say that as you're coming out of 14, heading up to 15, this is the time where you might say, you know what? I'm not going to make it by that guy safely before the kink. I'm going to back off now, pause a bit on that little straight before 15, and then get back on the gas early so that you get a great run out of 15 to pass the person that was going to be in your way through that kink. And yell more power in your best Jeremy Clark right? voice. As Please. You turbo power. More turbo power. <laughs> um, when you were talking about... I, I mean, this is also on the straight. I'm jumping, jumping on a gun a little bit. I'm thinking of it. Um, there is a, there's a lot of grass in this area. And when you mental said, stop looking at the grass or whoever said, stop looking at the grass. Um, also don't watch cars as they're going off the grass. Cause sometimes you will go with them. There is a lot, if it's wet or has been wet, that grass gets very slippery and there happens to be walls on both sides. We have seen cars slide continue to slide off of this just either doing something wrong lifted wrong did you do that hit a wall you didn't uh, uh i didn't know it was it was uh going from i went off and turn 11 in the tr and hit the flag station at turn 12. oh okay well that was not what i was talking but about no, but the, <laughs> the grass there if you go off in the wet yes you will pick up speed Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and or at least you feel like it at least. So Yes. So it's one of the, and, and not that you can always stop, but this one has enough runoff. It does. But if it's wet, it becomes an ice skating rink. So watch when you're going down the straight. It's one of those things to think about. Absolutely. All right. So you got through, your, you got through the kink. Okay. Now you're under the straight between 15 and 16, which is, it's a straight, it's wide, it's lots of room, but you've got another kink coming up, a kink of 16. 
This is a gentle kink, but it looks pretty rough when you're doing it. Uh, also friendly curbing on the inside. The problem you're going to have is you're going to be doing basically your top speed coming into there. You got to get through the kink and then gather the car back up before a very tight right-hander of 17. So some people are going to need to at least lift before 16. If you're being cautious, a nice lift through before 16 is good. Helps settle the car, go through 16. Okay. Gather it up, break afterwards, watch your traffic backing up into 17 because if you're coming up into 16 real hot and then you look and then all of a sudden you see everyone stop for 17 you're probably not going to make it and you're there's probably going to go off flag stations important right. flag station there too yeah there's a couple flag stations there along that straight watch them um, but if you don't have your eyes up you're not going to make it um if, if there's no one around your car is really good grip and it's not the fastest you can flat through 16 and on the other side of 16 once you've gotten the car to stop cornering and just be gathered up then you can break very hard for 17. But that's going to be about your you and your car, but eyes up is absolutely critical here. Um, the straight between 16 and 17 too also is a disaster in the wet. It is uh, it is a low spot there, and everywhere around it, the grass is higher than it is on both sides. So water and mud flow onto the track here if it's raining enough. So it's it's terrible. So that's especially it's, if it's, it's also wet. completely covered in do... covered in breaking of tires. It's yeah. it gets over the weekend it gets covered in tires. So yeah. there's a lot of rubber there that makes it even slipperier. Yeah. So watch out. You if it's raining enough, you maybe have to do a lot of your braking before 16 because you're not gonna have any traction in the mud and stuff on between 16 and 17. Careful. So it's quick. It's easy to get debris there too, just from yeah. people going off. If somebody doesn't break, loses brakes. We had this happen last year, actually. Somebody went into the wall that was far away from this. It's far. Oh, yeah. the, that the wall is far. Over, like, it's far the away there. from this part but, of the track. But you make it there. I've seen plenty of people make it right. all the way up there. How do they keep going that far? Oh, yeah, that, yeah, they just do. This is, I think, the most dangerous part of the track because you've got the highest speeds coming in and you've got a lot to happen in this short period of time. So careful. And then you're coming into 17, which is a very tight, uh, I'm going to say this is what, 120 degree right-hander. Um, it is mostly off camber at first, and then you get the camber back as you come into turn 18. So um, in 17, you, you start off, a little. Yeah. Yep. Start off track out in the left, come all the way to the inside, kiss the curbing on the inside, but don't go over it because it's a little bit big. It's, it's not going to help you. Um, in fact, if anything, it can kick you out to 18 which is no good. Um, but it, if you've done that right, you'll kind of flow out into 18, kind of into the middle of the track. You don't need to really track out 18. Um, so then come back into your right, watch the flag station on your right here. There's a good one that makes sure you, you can see what's going on on the straight because your visibility to straight is not good there. Uh, this is also where your uh, return to the pits is on your left. So if you're coming, if you're going back to the pits, stay wide on your left on 17 and 18. Stay out of the way so that you can go back into the pits with your fist out right before 19 is where the where pit in is. Uh, if you're not going into the pits, then cut back to your right. And there's a kind of a natural flow that you'll feel between 18 and 19 where you're you're not forcing it, but the car just flows nicely and hits right to the apex, which is right by the, the guardrail of 19 for the pit in. And then flow on down the straight. It's flow. No problem. Yeah. There are some parts of this track that really flow nicely if you get them well. And once you've done so it much, once, you'll, you'll say, yes, that worked. I need to do that again. And you know, the really three, four is one spot where f the flow happens. Um, the whole S is in the back, but I'm going to say, especially the 10, 11 flow is, is key. Also the 13, 14 flow is really important. What else do you guys want to add? We've the, been adding the flag staff, the flagging staff here, because this is a, a club track. Uh, <clears throat> they're really good. Uh, I would, yeah, I would, usually are. I would put them on par. So use them because they're, they're skilled at keeping you safe. And you, if you've never been here before, or if you, you're not comfortable with it, just, start noting on those practice days where those flag stations are or when you're out there for your first couple of laps and just make it a point of knowing where every one of them are because they're not going to be watching you. They're 
This is how you know they're a good team. Their eyes are going to be on the incident that they're trying to warn you about. And there's just a lot of blind hills. Eyes up. Yeah, eyes up is, is important here. If you've got someone that has a bad time with that, this is a great track to put a piece of tape on your windshield. Really, <laughs> not kidding. You're going to have a bad them. time, okay? Yeah. All right. Clear tape, not uh, giant thick gorilla tape. Yeah. No, I like no. just a thin piece of blue masking tape thin, thin across piece, the yes, windshield so that it, it you don't need to see anything below that. You don't. If you catch yourself looking down there, stop it up. I've had such great luck with students just doing vision drills here on this track is like they'll drive around and they're you know fighting it a little bit. And I start giving them specific spots to look that are way ahead of where they're looking. All of a sudden they're, they're hitting the rev limiter and they're going so much faster and I'm doing nothing but give them places to look. It's I've done the same important. with, yeah. with or without people in right seat. I've done the same. There's yeah. corners that I'm just stuck and I'm, I go through it in my head and then I realize I'm just looking at that apex, just looking at it. Wait, waiting for it to come over. And then I'm like, oh, now maybe I should look over there. Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a big deal here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, but Let's it's a fun, fun track. Yep. Everyone keep it, it clean. Is. Play nice. Let's all have a good time. Let's. Let's have a good time. Indeed. Okay. Wish I could be there. Sorry I can't. Everyone I... be safe. Have a good time. We yep. will. We'll take pictures and send them to you. Absolutely. And if you also wish you could be there, follow us on our social medias. Oh, and, uh, we'll be taking lots, doing lots be, of things. Be, yeah, there'll be hot tubs and uh, is no, is no, hot tubs. no, no hot tubs. Oh, brutal. Hot tubs okay. comes with Tally and Tally's not coming. So, oh, that's right, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, you, got, is, you got the boring team this week. Although, I know. although I, when I was talking to Pit Race about garages this week, when I was finally paying, I was talking to the, the HR director and she's like, so you guys are the ones with the hot tub, right? <laughs> So basically there, there's an did, asterisk next did to you, my name. In did you ask, did, did they ask, what did, what did you, did you say, is that good or bad? Or is it, a, no, a, no, oh, I, is I it up I, or I, is it a I, down? I laughed, I laughed and said, yes, that's us, but you'll be glad to know it's not coming this time. Oh, okay. Yep, the guy yelled laughed. about, you used our heart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's definitely an asterisk next to our name in the pit race records. Oh, so. that's fantastic. I guess it could be worse, maybe. <laughs> no, they were very nice and very pleasant. Sure. To, you know, we had to move one of the garages at some point in the week, but and but they were very nice to deal with. So uh, no complaints about pit race staff. They're all, all nice people. All right. Okay. All right. What Ready do you got? For? I guess. It's just a tip. It just a tip. It's just a tip, or it's hey, nice tip. That's another. Yeah. Hey, nice hey, tip. Hey, nice tip. <laughs> nice tip. Nice tip. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. All right. Right. So we talked about a bit about rain lines and what happens to the track when it's going to rain. So it gets. It's probably going to rain at some point this weekend. So what can you know? Now is the time to deal with prepping for rain. It's not. Oh, it's raining. Oh, what are we going to do? No, that's not the time. That's too late. Start thinking about it now. What are you going to do? Do you have wipers? Especially yeah, do they, if you don't have a garage. Right. Then you're screwed. Uh, well, yeah, bring a tent. Make sure you've got that stuff. Tarps. If you do you have wipers and do they work? And are the blades like completely rotted and gone or are they actually going to work and move water? Okay, good. Do you have any kind of lights? Because having at least a working tail light or two in the rain really, really helps people see you. More Not just a brake light, on this... but an actual tail light. Oh, yeah. because the, the spray. Are really good in the rain. The spray is bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you do not have a working tail light, I would strongly recommend you have a tail light. Ignore the, forget the headlights. Not as important. The tail lights are better. People are coming around you. Um, your windshield's gonna fog up. Everyone says, "No, well, I got Rainex anti-fog." You know how what that stuff's worth? Nothing. It does nothing. I don't think anyone's ever been like two people have ever been satisfied with Rainex anti-fog. <laughs> it's terrible, right? It's it, it, it's fine on your street car, but it doesn't it's... work in the race car. No, it, it, just it, not. it it becomes a paste. It's useless. Yeah. So, but you know what does work amazingly so, and we have proven it many times. Barbasol, Barbasol, Barbasol. Or any foaming, cheap shaving cream. Metal can. Yeah. Horrible smelling. Sense. Yes. 
Yeah. Wipe that all over the inside of your windshield, clean it off, buff it off. It absolutely helps avoiding the fog. If you have any way to get good air movement over your windshield, like, you know, a defroster, if you have that, keep it, have it working because it, it totally helps. How um, do you know that, Chris? Because oh. I left it in all our cars now because after uh, I didn't for so many years and it was terrible because <laughs> yes. I have to save weight. This 20 pounds is why we're not going to win. Yeah. Um, You're not nope. going to win if you can't see. Nope. Yeah. Clear windshield. That's how we're going to win. It's fantastic. That's how you can drive past everybody. Uh, there are also some heating grids you can get. They're like the rear defroster grids that can be applied to the front windows. I know some teams have had great luck with those. So do that. But also consider if you're not going to be able to do anything for your inside fogging, you're going to need a mechanical means of removing that fog, commonly known as the rag on a stick. And you, you joke, you laugh, but damn if they don't work. The keys with the rag on a stick, though, is you have to have a place to put it that is not just a puddle on the floor because the putting the rag on a stick in a puddle on the floor negates the purpose of the rag on a stick for your windshield. And it has so, to be accessible without you looking. You have to be able to yeah. grab the rag on a stick, utilize the rag on a stick, tuck the rag on a stick back in and make the corner. It's not going to go anywhere. I've definitely been in the, actually the boat in New Hampshire at the time where the rag on a stick got away from me in a corner <laughs> and I couldn't <laughs> see well enough to corner hard enough to get it back for a while <laughs> until eventually I got it just right. And I was just able to grab my rag on a stick back Isn't and that... then it had been in a puddle and it wasn't as nearly as good. <laughs> as yeah. Or you have a little clip like Uncle Dave has. Yeah, they have Dave, a little nice Uncle little Dave, nice smart. little, little like, spring clips yeah, on right, the trans just, tunnel clips yeah. right in. I've seen other teams actually um zip or not zip tie, but like tie it with a string to the driver's arm. Oh so yeah, that it yeah, yeah. Go too far. Right? Yeah. You know? uh, I think like it was thin sorry for so party a, did that, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's a very thin string. So if there was a real problem, it would break. Like not a, it's not gonna trap you or anything, but you know, that, make sure you always have it. Um, but it totally is important. And if you still have your windshield washers in, fill the tank up because your windshield's going to get grody. Uh, and also, Rain-X really is your friend. Put a fresh coat on. And not just the glass cleaner and Rain-X, that does, stuff doesn't work. Get the hardcore industrial strength. Little, little, little bottle. bottle that you have to put on. Which they, they changed off. the formula you know, a few years ago. So if you've got one like in the back of your parents' garage, the original formula, oh, yeah, it's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> get that one. Okay. Yeah. Even okay. the new stuff works still better than anything else you're going to find around. So just do that too. But now's the mm -hmm. time to think. Also bring things like, you know, rain jacket, towels, galoshes, tarps. Yeah. So if you don't have a garage and you don't have one of those cheap $99 effectively weighted down uh, tarps. Yeah. Spend the money now and then do just uh, have a couple of those cheap $5 ponchos because the, the misery is not while you're getting wet. The misery is an hour later when you're still wet. Oh and, yeah. yeah. And yeah, keep that dry set of clothes for your drive home at the very least. See what's going <laughs> to rain at the end of the day, Sunday. That yeah. will be necessary. <laughs> oh, well, cool. I feel like we've done done a car show to steal from our friends over at apex adjacent. Do we have even the foggiest pun intended? of what we're going to talk about next week. We totally do. It's going to be the 40% hangover, 80% post-race show, which makes <laughs> sense if you heard our last year's show about pit face. Yes. We'll see what kind of adventures we run to this year. Oh, I'm and sure. I have, I'm sure we'll have a story or two. Yes. I've completely failed to uh, queue up the music. So I'm just going to do this acapella folks. Thank you so much for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's patented ponty brothers episode of everyone racers hope you'll join us in the world of driving racing and building because everyone can be a racer even you if you've enjoyed this podcast subscribe if you're watching this on youtube do that little like and subscribe button you know caress it hit the notification bell so next time i find somebody making a funny noise and i repeat it for an hour you'll know that that video is available if you enjoyed it do that go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. If you didn't enjoy it, go to iTunes, give us a five-star rating and then tell us why you hated us. If you have any questions, show ideas, comments, drop a line on our Facebook page, everyone racers, 
fail us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text me at 484-243-0455. Find us at Instagram, Twitter at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook under Everyone Racers, and even Reddit at slash E1R. Thanks again. And until next week, keep the shiny side up unless it's covered in coleslaw and French fries and then corned beef hatch and just try and keep the whole sandwich together.